Oh, folks, look what we have here. Probably a 1987, I'm guessing, Craftsman Eager One. Right? Right there. And normally, if you were to glance at this, you'd think it was a Briggs. But it isn't. It's a Tecumseh. Number one, first tail is the carburetor and the muffler are on the same side. And uh, the Eager One is a Tecumseh line. But this, this lawnmower is in pretty good shape, actually. It's been repaired. You can see there's been some spatter welding going on there. But uh, let's get it up a little higher so I don't have to bend over, and we're going to have a little bit of fun. Be right back. Well, hey, you might as well watch, right? There we go. Now, right off the bat, we'll put you back straight up and down here. Uh, this isn't right. Uh, it looks to me like the cable is seized to the, the on-off dead man cable. It's not moving very much. See that right there? Um, I did check for spark. There was no spark. So I got a hunch if we disconnect this uh, dead man cable from here and put a tie wrap on here just to emulate that. Uh, we'll get a spark. So let me just get on that and I'll be right back. Okay, we're going to need a few pairs of pliers here. Sometimes these are hard to get off. But look at this, folks. I've already used it once. I got this from BSS Small Engines. He must 3D print these, eh? So I'm going to try, and probably with some success, get this uh, dead man cable off of off of this bracket so this goes the cable goes through there like that I hope you can see what I'm doing here and then right up against there like that right and then if we take the tension off the dead man cable I think you guys can see what I'm trying to do here look at that well, let's get that out of there first <laughs> This is where you need an arm, an arm coming out of your forehead, right? There we go. Okay, that's the mechanical part. Now we can relax a little bit and get this cable to come off. Look at that. That's exactly what those are designed to work. So first, before we get too carried on in this job, we're going to see if this cable is completely seized or not. That's step two. Now we got to get a, a piece of tie wrap or something on there to hold the electrical something by electrical. And we're going to just put a tie wrap on that bad guy. It's got a nice tab on there. This was back when machines were designed to be worked on, right? So now we're just going to cheat a little bit. And we're going to see if we get a spark. You can see. So I'm just going to pull this. I should be able to see it too because I. The, the rope's not terminated in the right place. Yes, sir, Bob. So there's a spark. So what do you think? And there's absolutely no fuel in this thing at all. That's not our main concern right now. I'm going to stick a little tiny bit of gas in the cylinder. And at the same time, we can have a look at the spark plug. But right after all those years, eh? Ooh, it's got a little wetness on it. Okay, well I'm going to go clean this up on the grinder and I'll be right back. On the, not, it's, not, it's a grinder with a wire brush in it. I'll be right back. I don't like saying it, folks, but they don't make them like that anymore. This is a RJ19LM. I did not measure the resistance. It doesn't matter. The first thing we're going to do is move my uh, spark indicator. We're going to put a little bit of fuel in this uh, piston, uh, cylinder, excuse me. But 
we're going to put this in before we get a fire so that the fire is contained inside said cylinder. We've all, most of us small engine guys have had a little awakening in that regard. Okay, so with the, with the brake man tied down and the cable disconnected, we should have spark here all the time. So when we kill it, we're going to have to pull that off with a pair of pliers. So I've got those right here. Let's see if she barks. Arf, arf, arf. Here we go. Well, that's all the fuel there was in there, but okay, that tells us a lot. Should we try and put some fuel in there? <laughs> okay, just, oops, sorry about that. I don't know. How, how good does the fuel line feel? Well, it's hard. Boy, that thing takes a long route. I wonder if I should just take the uh, bowl off and have a quick look. We might op be opening up a can of worms here, guys. So right here is where we're working. Good half inch ratchet wrench. Oh, it's recessed. So we got to use a socket. There we go. Is that a, yeah, that's half inch. That should work. I'm going to take it off and have a look. Could be scary under there. So we need a new rope. Uh, what else do we need? Probably a car clean. Oh, don't look too bad. You know what? It does not look that bad, guys. Oh, yeah. That's necessary for priming because you're pumping air into the... Sorry, you guys are in my way. I'm in your way. Or who's in whose way? There we go. I'm just going to give this a quick squirt. We'll put a new seal on there for sure. And look at when they painted them, right? They, uh, this was at the back. They paint them after. Crazy, eh? I'm going to pour just a little bit of gasoline in there and we'll see if it drains through. Still lots to do, but... Four glurps, five glurps. Where's the gas line? See if we can pinch that. Oh yeah. Good thing we need we need a new ring on there anyway. I'm not gonna open up the OEM packages just yet. Gotta get in the way there for a minute. We'll do an open heart surgery on this guy. Well not quite, eh? It's not happening for me. I gotta tilt tilt the mower. Don't say anything. I'll bring it over this way. And we'll tilt her up. Okay, let's get that O-ring on there. Right on. Now for this we have to check a couple of holes. Right here. That's a big one. That's never gonna melt over. And is there a side shooter on this guy? I don't think there is. starter. I wonder how much gas I spilled. Oh, a little. Clean off my my pender lip here. Okay, now we can take these useless clamps off. 
I never did check the oil, did I? That was bad. I think it's got some. He said it had oil. Oh yeah. In fact, it's got a little too much. That's fine. So are you guys ready to watch this procedure? I want to see if I can prime it. You hear that? Doesn't sound too strong. Well, I've had one of these for years. So, turtle, bunny rabbit. So I'll just be careful here. Okay, that's step one. We'll talk to you guys in a few minutes. So I don't know what to do, guys. It's, it's uh, the carburetor is priming a little. I don't know if you can hear that. Oh yeah, it's squirting a bit, eh? But there's a leak right here on the intake manifold for the choke. You see that? So we might just have to take that carburetor off there and uh, see what we can do. I'm not happy about that, but it's okay. When I get this off, you guys are going to understand what I'm complaining about here. There we go. That'll do it. There we go. Oh my goodness. Okay, there's the carburetor. Look at the size of that boot. Now let's get the boot off. If we can. I don't know if I got a piece of rubber pipe like that. I, 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 it's quite hard to uh, imagine what I'm going to do with that. I keep chasing it in the wrong direction. Okay, let's go to plan B. I want to get this tank off of here. Those look like quarters. We're going to have to tackle this a little differently. This probably holds the gas tank down and everything, eh? Oh, are you looking off in the wrong direction there? So here we are trying to just attack this in a different way. Good. Now this tank should lift off of here. Yes it will. Took the uh, oil holder on her, put her on her thing root. Okay. And it's just the gas line that's causing me grief now, so we'll just take a pair of pliers and take that gas line off of there. We're going to have to make one an inch longer than this. There goes Mrs. Bender. And now it's going to look like any other normal run of the mill garden variety to come see now. Not a fan of that hood. Now, let's see what we got. Pliers, anything. There we are. Look at this is the evil deal I've been trying to get off right here.
Ah, and that's the tube that goes on to the vent for the carburetor. Got it. Okay, so now we're almost in control now, guys. Right? But I don't have... One moment, please. One of these. No, one of these. Think I could make one? Or rebuild this one with heat shrink or something? That's an idea. Okay, we won't let... We're not going to catch a hernia on that. And you know what? It's actually pretty clean. But, the, once again, the owner put the spring on the wrong side. So I'm going to take the spring off. This is the governor spring, eh? There we go. I think on all Tecumsehs, this should go on the governor, this end, and that end should go on the carburetor. No an issue. I'll be right back, guys. We're going to just do a little searching in the hoard. All right. I think we're here. Ain't about here? We're going to uh, put this carburetor back together again. I have no idea what we're going to do for the elbow to, to the air cleaner. This is it, but it's all cracked. Eh? Just from age. So this is actually not a bad little setup. A really good gasket here. Not a good gasket on the inlet. I just have to think about what I'm going to do with this guy here. I could use tape. But I don't want pieces of it coming off. I thought of a, thir a three quarter inch or a one inch plumbing elbow might work. So let me just turn you off and we'll think about that. Alright you guys, I think I got this. I took a corner out of some handlebars for mowers, which is what this is, right? You can see that. I just took this corner off. I did not do the grinding here. And when I finish this up, I'm just going to take a little bit of heat shrink and stick one there and one there. And that's the actual piece that I just came up with right there. So that's pretty sweet. I think we can do that. I feel sorry for the next guy that takes it apart, but that's all right. So here we are now. The carburetor's mounted. We've got our 90 degree uh, invention happening here that we're going to heat shrink into place later. Maybe even put a screw into it. Eh? And uh, now it's just a matter of getting the gas tank back down. Okay, my friends. I got the uh, cable done for the lawnmower. That's working good. This is not going to cut the mustard. So I'm, I've got two pieces of heat shrink on the original piece of rubber. It's got a couple of cracks in it, but I think with some uh, really good tough tape and a little bit of hope and a prayer, we can seal that up because this is an intake, right? And it's intake off of the air filter, so it's not going to be abused that bad. So let's get the heat gun. I have all kinds of stuff out here trying to make this go. Now we're not going to shrink these too much. Just enough to hold on. And maybe, I should have oiled those uh, connections first, but I don't want to take them off. So let's just see what we got. I shoot myself. Okay, I think that's enough heat. I look that dry because we're past the end of the chisels. So now, just let that cool. Ooh, it's hot. It's going to go there to there, right? Are we going to use clamps? We might. 
if they fit. I think it Yep, that's going to go on like that. Okay. You see where my screw is going? I turned up the RPM a little too much, so then I backed it off a half a turn. Hi, baby. Hi. That's not Trudy. That's my niece. And she comes every week or so to visit us. It's wonderful. Okay folks, this is the, the old Tecumseh that sat in the shed for 20 years. Let's see how she goes. Give her a little prime. This one was really hard to work on because this, this cover is something I had never seen before. You guys got a shot of that. Thanks a lot. That was a tough one.